Okay, so uh, it's just about that time, but we'll get started. Um, so if you're just joining us, we are going to talk all about Bitmoji today, and you might have seen, um, I know I've seen quite a bit of examples on social media lately, which is kind of fun to see, um, but teachers are using Bitmojis as a way to like personify themselves in the digital space, and it really is a great way to um, keep connections and relationships going. So Corey is here because she's going to show us um, all about the Bitmoji life Educator life, I guess. <laughs> Feeling like the pressure is on today. <laughs> Erica raised the stakes with her comments earlier about how excited people were. So oh God, I got so many emails back from people that were super excited about this. <laughs> oh awesome. my goodness. Um, so I guess what I thought I would do is I would start with just quickly going over what is Bitmoji and how do you get it, um, just in case you're not familiar with it or you don't have it. Um, so Bitmoji is an app that you have on your mobile device that is available on both Android and iPhone. Um, so I'm gonna change my um, I'm gonna change my camera for a second, and I'm gonna use a document camera, which is super laggy. So just it'll be bear with me. Okay. So I have my phone and I can't really get a good picture of what you all are seeing. So if it doesn't look right, please say something. Um, and if I go in to find the app, so I have this app downloaded on my phone already. Um, and when you first sign up, you are going to create your avatar. And the great thing about this is that you can make it look um, like what you what you think you look like. Um, I always think I look really good as a Bitmoji. Um, so, um, so I have mine here, but you're basically gonna go through and you start by choosing um, your skin tone. And then um, you can go through and choose uh, your hair color and your hairstyle. And um, I know that in the world of COVID, my hair no longer looks like mine. Um, it looks a little shaggier and maybe something more along the lines of that. So I can change my hair and what that looks like. Um, I can change hair treatment. They've added so many different things to this um, to really match what people look like. You can change your eye shape, your eye color, the eye placement on your head, um, things, things like that. Um, you can change your eyebrows, your nose shape, your glasses, you can change your jawline, your face shape, your lips. So, I mean, there's so many different options so that you can work through um, making it look like what you look like. And then of course, there's the fun part where you can go in and you can um, choose your clothes. Oops. So they have um, outfits pre-made. You can go through and choose your own pants and things like that and just have a lot of fun with it. And then once you're done, save it. And then you have all of these um, options on your phone, which you can uh, search for. So, you know, like for students, you know, miss you so much, things like that. Um, so I'm gonna switch my camera back. And if you wanna know more about the Bitmoji app, um, feel free to reach out and we can go over that more because I'm not going to spend more time than that. Um, so I do have a resource. I think what I'm going to do is share my screen now so that you can see everything. Okay. Um, so I do have a resource here that I will share. Um, maybe Erica, we can pop this into the, um, the information section within the YouTube video so that you can have access to this. So I'm, I've just got some examples for you. I've got links um, that might be helpful. I have information like, um, you know, your the size for a good Google Classroom image to make it fit, um, things like that. Where you can find images online because we do need to be careful of copyrighted images. And then just additional resources that go into um, taking it to the next level, like people have made talking bitmojis or they've made them animated. 
um, and things like that. So I just have a few examples of how I have used Bitmoji. Um, for a Proctor Elementary School, we for many years um, have hatched chickens within um, either the third or the fourth grade. And so this year we did it remotely. So I made some banners for um, my website using Bitmoji. Um, that one's not much of a Bitmoji, but uh, I think this one was my favorite, my activities one, because who doesn't love a good um, laser beam photo? Um, Proctor Elementary does a flower show every year. This year we made it virtual. So I made a Bitmoji banner using the principal um, for the entry form. And then I've just had some fun doing other things like um, I've animated for videos that I've made for the students. So this was an example. And this was pretty easy if you think about a flip book um, within Google Slides. So that's what we were able to do there. So um, under the helpful links, I think the one of the most um, useful things that you're going to find is the Bitmoji Chrome extension. If you click on the link, it'll bring you to the Chrome store and it will allow you to, um, I already have it added, but you click the button there. It allows you to add it, it's up here with all my other extensions. And so if I click on that, I now have my Bitmojis right within my computer. Um, so I'm, I can easily use everything here. If I click on one, it's gonna tell me that, hey, I need to copy it, or you can click and drag it. Um, and you can search for whatever it is that you're looking for. All right, so why don't we, actually before, um, before I do that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just for a second. Um, before I get into creating one, that was just sort of a very quick overview, but are there any questions about how to get Bitmoji or anything like that before I go into how to create um, a classroom with your Bitmoji? Okay, um, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, Erica will let me know if you have any questions. So there are two Google tools that you can use to create your Bitmoji. A lot of teachers have been creating them within Google Slides. Google Slides is really easy to use. You can download it as, um, oops, I don't think I shared my screen again. So if you create it within Slides, you can download it as a JPEG. You can download it as a PDF, which would allow you to um, insert links and things like that. And then the other option is um, Google Draw, which is what I have up here. And the reason that you might wanna use Google Draw is if you are planning on using this as, let's say your Google Classroom banner, or like I showed you a Google Form banner or the um, Google Sites banner, is you're gonna wanna change the size of your area. And to do that within Google Draw, you're gonna go to File and you would just go to Page Setup and you're going to um, custom, custom put in your directions. And I've given you a list within this um, file that I will share with you on the best um, dimensions. So let's say I'm creating it for my Google Classroom and I'm gonna change it to pixels and I want it to be a thousand pixels by 250 is what they've told me. So that would be the size of my Google Classroom banner. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to find um, my background images. What do I want the walls and the floors to look like? Now, there are tons of things on Teacher Pay Teachers where you can go find some great clip art. Um, you pay for it and then it's yours to use. You can search the web right from within Google Draw. And the great thing about searching from right within is that Google is automatically filtering out images that you are allowed to reuse. Um, so there's there's some gray area here with copyright issues. Um, you know, many times as teachers, we can use things within our classroom to teach our students, but because your Bitmoji classroom could potentially be public, you just need to be careful that you're not taking other people's artwork. Um, so. Let's look for um, a background. So there's a lot of stuff out there where there's already a wall, there's already a floor, such as this one. And um, so let's just take this one and insert it. 
And then I'm going to need to just resize it so it's like my background. Sometimes this can distort. Um, so sometimes you can find images that you can easily just replicate and use um, over and over again. And then we're gonna go in and find um, furniture. Oops, I don't wanna replace my image. Mm -hmm. Let's say we wanna put in a bookshelf. Um, sometimes adding the word clip art is really helpful in finding things. Let's just go with this one here. And if you can find a chair. Right. Okay, so let's say I want to use this chair, but it has a white background. So I'm going to show you some ways that you can get rid of that. Um, so I've got down here under helpful links, I have a couple of links that will help you remove the backgrounds. This first one, remove.bg is really easy to use. So what I need to do is I am going to go into Google and I am going to actually find and download that image. So I'm gonna to go to image. Now, if you're not familiar with how to filter your images within here, um, what I've done is I've typed in what I'm looking for and I've gone to the images tab and I'm gonna go over to tools and right here it says usage rights. I'm gonna filter for things that are labeled for reuse. Um, you still need to be careful because some things are labeled for reuse, but they're not really available for reuse. So I'm gonna see if I can find that same chair. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna go back and look to see what that chair looked like. All right, let's see if we can find another chair that does not have. So you can kind of see that when I clicked on this chair, it's got the tile background. It's transparent. So I'm trying to find one that is not transparent. Um, of course, they all are. All right, let's try something different. The best plans never work, right? Um, oh, okay. Let's change my search. Instead of chair clip art, let's just click chair. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna open that chair and I am just going to, um, I'm gonna save the image to download it. And then I'm gonna go to this website here and all I have to do is I can drag and drop, I can upload it. It's gonna show me the original and then it's gonna show me what it looks like once it removes the background. And then what I need to do is I need to download and if I go back into my Bitmoji classroom, I can just drag that up there. And so now I have a chair with a transparent background. And let's, um, let's flip it so it's going the other way. And then let's put myself into the classroom. So this is where having that Bitmoji extension is really helpful. So I'm gonna pull that up and um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna search for me sitting. All right, here is one. So you can right click on this and save it or you can actually just drag and drop it to where you want it to be. So here's me, I'm gonna resize myself so I look, and I'm just gonna position myself in my chair and there you go. And so of course, you know, I would add a whole lot more to this to make it fun. 
um, maybe some lights and some desks, maybe a window. Um, I've seen people put in some really fun artwork, um, inspirational posters. Let's see what we can find there. So I can just drag in a bunch of stuff and resize it. Then when I'm done, so let's say that this is what I wanna do and I'm happy with it. When I'm done, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to download it as uh, an image. So I can choose to do a JPEG, I can choose to do a PNG, it's really up to you. And then from there, you can go into Google Classroom and you can upload, um, you can upload it as your banner. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna see if there's anything else. Some great websites for getting um, free pictures. Pixabay is one that I use quite a bit because it's easy to filter from images, pictures, clip art, things like that. Um, a lot of free stuff that you can use. And then I did a bunch of research for you to find other websites that were recommended by other teachers. Um, so, what questions do we have? And what else do you wanna see? So I dropped in some examples um, if in the chat so people can see Megan Martell has been using it and she does like these virtual field trips with them, which is kind of cute. So you guys can take a peek and see how someone else is using it. Um, I see Patty's hand raised. Thanks, Erica. Corey, I noticed in your um, hatching chickens, your Bitmoji seemed animated. <laughs> talk about how you did that, or is that yeah. too like advanced? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so you know, certainly, just creating um, your, you know, a classroom image is a great starting off point, and then once you get used to that and finding what you want, then um, you can do things like animate it, make a talk. I have not made a talking one yet, though that might be on my, my to-do list for um, my next thing, the next fun thing I do. So to do um, an animated one, let me pull up um, my Google Drive and I'll show you one that I've made and then show you what I did with it then. Um, so let me... Oops, present my screen again. Bear with me, some of this stuff is like buried in here. So this was the example that I had given. Um, this is Mr. Wood and he, um, he sent me this baseball bitmoji. And so I, I felt like for the kids, I wanted to make it a little bit more fun. So what I did, this is taking forever to load, is um, I started off by creating my background, put myself in there. Um, when I do this, uh, this is for our chicken videos. Um, I have a video playing on the projector of um, the staff member waving that's featured in our episode. And so what I did was I started with the Bitmoji and I put it um, wherever I wanted the video to start. And then for every frame, I just moved it just a little bit. Um, so this this one, I think I moved it over a little bit and moved it up a little bit, and then he goes down. So you, you can think of it kind of like a flip book. When you make a flip book, you you make your initial drawing, and then your second drawing, you make it, you change it a little bit. And so that's what I've done here. So this one uh, was about fifteen slides. What I did was um, I converted all of these to JPEGs. 
which in Google Slides can be kind of time consuming. If you go to file, you go to download and you can download it as a JPEG. The, the downfall of doing this is that you have to do it for each slide. So what I did is I actually downloaded it as a Microsoft PowerPoint because I have PowerPoint on my um, desktop. And then I was able to save from PowerPoint, it will save the entire slideshow as JPEGs and then I re-uploaded it. From there, I went into WeVideo. Um, if I think many of us have used WeVideo, but if you haven't, it is a gold mine for things beyond just creating videos of student or videos for students. So what I did is I then took um, the JPEGs that I created and I uploaded them into a WeVideo project. And so you can see them um, down here. So I've got each individual picture right down here. The majority of my pictures are set. You can change how long you want. If I highlight all of those and right click, I can change the time. The majority of them are set for, for three tenths of a second. The first and the last one are a little bit longer because I wanted to kind of give an intro and and and, and uh, an outro. So if I click play, you'll see it's going through and now my bitmoji looks like he's moving. Then I have two options. I can go through and finish and now um, we video gives you the option you can export as a video, which we've always done, but they give you the option of exporting it as a GIF or a GIF, however, however you choose to say it, which will create that short video for you. Um, there is another option for, I'm just trying to find my sheet, for creating um, a video like that. So I mentioned it was kind of a lot of work to go through and change each slide into a, um, a JPEG. So there is actually a website called Tall Tweets. And what it does is it actually will take your Google slide and it will change it into um, a video for you. So I would just go to select presentation and I'm gonna select the presentation that I want. Um, let's see. So there's the one that I've been using. So we'll select that one. And It will think Let's see if we can convince it to think a little bit faster. While we're waiting for that to think, I'll go back and forth and, oh, there it is, okay. So here is, um, here is my GIF and I can um, change, so now I can, I can save it, I can change it, I can tweet it. Um, I can change how long things are, things like that, and then I can, I can download it and watch it. Nope, maybe not that one. It's, but I, I have used this, but it's been a while. So I think where it, um, it was asking for some information I needed to put in the time. Um, so, you know, the, the 0.3 seconds, um, things like that. So if you put in a little time, it will automatically make the video for you without you having to download the JPEG. Any other questions? Oh, and um, just in case you've never used Google Draw before, it's worth mentioning that when you are in your Google Drive, um, when you go to that plus button to make something new, that's where you're gonna find um, Google Drawings. And you might have to click on the more. Sometimes you have to go to that more button to find the additional 
things. I mean, we tend to use um, sheets, slides, and docs quite a bit. So I think those are the first three that we see. This was super cool. I know I'm <laughs> going to be fiddling around with this. What do you guys think? I know it's a lot of information. So the resource that I will share goes through and has additional videos on how to do things um, and how to take it further. Awesome, Corey. This is so great. Thank you so much. Yep, or at least a lot of counselors are using these. Yeah, it's great for like that social emotional piece, I would think. Like really building the community because they can see like a whole version of you. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I've seen um, some teachers do is they have, um, because we can't be together with our students right now, and I know a lot of people like those end of year school photos, I have seen teachers take the time to create an individual bitmoji of each student and then they've made a virtual class photo. Oh my God, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also the examples I, I set there. I just realized that Megan's ones talk. Ooh. So you want to you want to pull one of those up? Yeah. Here. Yeah. You click on it and it brings you. Um, oh, hold on. Okay. Let's see. We've got to share a tab, correct? Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, click on that one. Maybe. So one of the things that I notice about her examples is that she's downloaded them as PDFs. So when you want things to, to um, be linked or things like that, um, downloading as a JPEG is not going to work. So I think her, yeah. So if you click on, so click on Mrs. Martell to hear the directions and then it kind of links out to somewhere else. Oops. So it links out to, I've got it pulled up. It links out to this. Although I think you can embed audio in a Google slide now. You can, but you would have to, you wouldn't be able to download it. But you could publish it to the web. Yes. And it has a link and then you could just click on it. You would hear it right in there without, but it looks like this goes to like a video she actually made. Yeah. So then she's got a video of her talking. Right. Pretty cool. What did you type into clip art for the background? Uh, for my background, um, I I think I typed in floor wall background. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what you were and on. then for some of the other ones, like uh, the one, the baseball example I showed you with Mr. Wood, um, I had kind of been going off of a Toy Story theme. And so I used um, digital paper that I had purchased from Teachers Pay Teachers. And Orly, also add um, the word clip art to it. Can sometimes filter out like things that you don't need. Uh, awesome. Lots of great comments here that people think the students will love it. Linda, you've been using it on your phone, but not so much with the Google stuff. Um, and Orly also thinks the kids are going to love it. Um, yeah, it looks fun. I think I think once you get the hang of it, it looks pretty simple to do. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys start making. <laughs> I know. Share with us. If you try this out and yeah. use it, share it with us. We'd love to compile resources for other yeah. people. Yeah, that would be awesome. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, yeah, well, it's not really a question, but I just was thinking, because um, at this point, we're just about at the end. But for next year, I want to try making the classroom banners, because I'm going to be using Google Classroom again yeah. I, I, most years. So um, yeah, that'll be fun to make unique little banners and I can put all sorts of my little like science stuff on them. And we, I could even like change up the banners as we do different units. So I love yeah. that. 
Yeah, because it will be a good use of our time around you tonight. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. Maybe we should build in some PD time after after June 9th, part of our, our days at the end of the year. Everybody makes a bit emoji. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for attending and um, have a really nice afternoon. Thanks, Corey. Thanks.